Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, dear students, uh, today we're going to deal with the types of OS. This is our uh, uh, next lecture. This is the second lecture actually uh, in the OS series. Okay, we discussed this um, types of OS. Before this, we'll try to see uh, what was before we started the OS, okay? Okay, in 1940, the story started with the EDISAC, and then uh, in 1955, we got an open shop system, where basically we had no uh, OS at all, but uh, a programmer was the operator, and he was the user, actually, and he gets a time to uh, a system is given to him. Okay, he gets a time, and uh, he will be given the system, and he will uh, be assigned the, some time, say one hour time or two hour time, or a half an hour time and, and or whatever and um, he has to do all the things so that is why oh, it's called open uh, shop then later on uh, we had an operator which was specialist in loading and uh, executing the programs on the system so programmer hands over things to the no program writes programs and submit state calls to this operator and operator feed calls collects output from the printer so it was the job of the operator now now we had a situation like this. This is a system. We have an uh, operator here, and we've got a programmer here. The programmer gives things to the operator. They are human, okay, operators. And uh, uh, they, this, this operator uh, does actually a kind of job which today's uh, OSs do, okay? So these operators, higher operators, actually uh, do all, the, all those things of loading and debugging and, you know, uh, loading in, in, in something in a memory and executing and letting uh, other jobs execute, schedule the jobs and do setups. So it is basically two, two things uh, which is to be done. One is to schedule the jobs and second is the setup. Okay, we'll talk this in a, uh, in a, uh, in a short while. So these things were done by the uh, operator. Okay, so uh, really this was uh, not uh, efficient one and uh, operators even hate it and programmers hate it, okay? Uh, so we need to do something better, okay? So two things, one is scheduling uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you, are, you, you are given a time uh, to execute a job, uh, so this will be given like an, uh, like I said, half an hour or one hour time, and maybe the program finishes in 45 minutes time. And if you are given one hour time, so 50 minutes are wasted or, Say, for example, you need more time and you are you lesser time. They are going to have 30 minutes time and you are uh, finishing in one hour time or 45 minutes time. So it, it's a kind of problem, okay? So scheduling is a kind of problem here and uh, the job uh, to be, uh, and, and then, then a setup, sorry. Then a setup, uh, setup means that you are having a program. Say, for the Fortran program, you have to load the compiler. You have to compile your Fortran and then load that into the memory okay then you're going to execute but there may be errors you have to again start up the whole situation okay uh, right from the beginning you have to do all those things together so that means uh, the setup and scheduling that's going to take considerable amount of time so we're going to do something which will fix this and which will uh, look better and that's why we have what's called the batch OS's which come up batch of because we want to do something very faster and we don't because uh, what will happen is maximum times here the CPU um, stays idle, okay? Because it's an operator doing job till then operator loading the com compilers or or source codes and all those things. Now uh, until until then your CPU is sitting idle. So we're gonna do something better. So we thought of uh, you know batch OS. So we started our batch OS. Uh, we started actually because we got the tape drives now. Uh, so introduction tape drives actually allow the batching of the jobs. What the programmer does is puts jobs in the cards as before, uh, but the cards was given to the operator then which loads them. But here all cards are read onto a tape. Okay, the tape gets, uh, gets all the cards. Now operator carries input tape to the computer then. Uh, operator is still there, results is written to the output tape and output, uh, you know, tape taken to the printer and so on. Uh, now, but the thing is that we have uh, one of the things uh, which operator was doing now we do is done by the resident monitor, which is in the uh, memory. We have a part of uh, operating system called resident monitor, uh, okay? 
And why we saw the register monitor? Because monitor as a whole is a big thing. And the part of the monitor is here. And then there are is other part, which is like utilities and all, uh, and some functions which are, which are loaded as a subroutines when uh, we need them. We have a source program which needs them. That will be added to the uh, resident monitor. So that is uh, later on uh, taken into account. Otherwise, uh, the resident monitor remains all the time in the memory. Okay. And this is the guy uh, which takes the charge. Okay. And initial uh, control is with the resident monitor. Okay. Here. And um, then the monitor reads a uh, job and transfers control uh, to the CPU and all that. And, and when the when the when you are done with the CPU is done with execution, it goes back to the uh, monitor again. Okay, so let's uh, talk in detail now. This resident monitor. Okay, now uh, if you look at this uh, diagram, this is a monitor which is resident monitor always in a memory, and the rest of the space it seems smaller. It's actually bigger. Okay, and it, this is for the user program area. The first control will be with the monitor. Okay, now it has a different parts like interrupt processing, device drivers, you know, job sequencing, control, uh, language interpreter. We'll talk about this uh, in a moment. And the main job of the batch operating system is automate transition between jobs. So that's the job sequencing. Okay, uh, that's how which, which operator does uh, in the beginning. Operator was actually doing the job sequencing. Uh, many jobs comes up, which job to load, which not to load, so done by the operator, and it, it took a lot of time, a waste of CPU time. So we want to automate that, and so that the jobs will be faster. What will happen is, firstly, the control is with the monitor, and monitor reads uh, uh, the instructions of of, of, a, of any job, and um, then it, it knows, say, for example, we have to load the particular uh, say, for example, uh, pro, uh, so source code. If we have a source code, for example, or if we have a, a Fortran program, for that matter, so we have to load the Fortran compiler. We have to do what? Uh, if, if we have to first um, um, uh, load the source code, uh, when we load the, I mean, uh, the compiler, then after that we have to load the source code. So we need to uh, read it from the, say, for example, if it is in a tape drive, so we need uh, the device drivers which can interact with the tape drive. Okay, so monitor has all those device drivers to interact with the tape drive and get the uh, required uh, code and data into the memory. Okay, user in in a user area, then maybe a control is given from monitor to the first line of the code and CPU start executing it. So CPU is actually uh, on one side, firstly uh, running some monitor program. And then uh, monitor actually tells CPU to start executing the user program. And there may be in a user program some interrupts, okay? In between, says there is some uh, input output. So it will um, take control back to the monitor, okay? And monitor will tell him to uh, go for, do, do some input output, wherever it is, so that you, you may not uh, read the, uh, the next, there may be next job in the tape drive, so your monitor may, uh, so the CPU uh, do not read uh, something else, but uh, specifically what it uh, should read. So it is the monitor which actually tells CPU to do uh, what to do. Okay, and mo uh, it is the CPU which executes uh, sometimes the monitor lines of code and sometimes the uh, user uh, array code. Okay, and uh, these things uh, actually uh, uh, are done. We get we got what's called the JCL. You know, you, our programs will not be just a programs. But some additional syntax, uh, primitive, uh, you know, programming language syntax called job control language, and uh, that will be kind of like this. Um, we have a dollar sign, uh, which is the start of the job, and then uh, dollar FTN. And when the when when, when monitor sees the dollar FTN, that means it's a Fortran uh, um, program. So we have to load the Fortran compiler. If that if it it would have been COBOL, so we have to load the COBOL. So this will tell us what is to be loaded. Now uh, when when uh, FTN is seen, uh, okay, uh, it it loads the appropriate language compiler from its mass storage. Say for example, tape, okay. Then compiler translates the user program into the object code. Now after uh, that, that Fortran code is compiled, you can uh, load that into the tape drive itself, or you may load that into the memory. 
So if you're loading that in the memory, then you need to actually uh, you, you, we say that uh, we say that you compile, okay? Then you load. That's load in the memory, and you go. That means execute, okay? But maybe uh, you are uh, putting that in the tray drive, okay? Then uh, what will happen is this uh, dollar load uh, will come into play, okay? This will be required. Now this this will be read by the monitor, okay? Uh, which regains control after the compile operation. Now, now, now the uh, monitor has to invoke uh, the loader, which loads the object program, which now happens in the tape drive into the into the memory, okay? Um, where the compiler was, maybe the compiler was in the memory. Now you have you can just uh, reload that uh, compiler and load the object code, which you come uh, object code of the compiler. But what I'm saying is we compile the program that was in the tape drive, the object code. Now you have to load the compile uh, object code into the memory, okay? If you have directly uh, put that object code in the memory, then you don't need to load, then this is not required. You just go, you just execute. You will, you will tell the processor um, that object code is the memory, execute the first line of code, okay? Okay. Now a monitor is controlling beautifully. It is scheduling. It's doing all the things. It has a device drivers to interact with the tape drives and uh, memory and so on. And um, it, it does the job sequencing. How? Because when the job is finished, okay, here it goes uh, back to the control goes back to the monitor. Monitor will tell the CPU to uh, actually uh, load the next job, and next job will be loaded and so on. So you don't need an operator. So that job scheduling is automated. Okay. So CPU is in, uh, is uh, you know kind of busy, but not that busy. We had to do much better things, uh, which we will do. Okay. Now interrupt processing uh, can be here because uh, what will happen is uh, maybe uh, you have an uh, interrupt because maybe the, uh, this this uh, maybe this process. Say for example, you are, you are trying to execute this process. Uh, you are in middle of it, and it was a deadlock. So we have, uh, in addition to these things, we have other things, the hardware uh, features uh, in a batch OS. One is the memory production. We need a memory production, okay? One is the timer, which I was just talking about. Then we have a privileged instructions, okay? And we have the interrupts. So we don't want to uh, hog our resources by a particular user. So uh, and and we uh, just don't want that our user program uh, starts writing or reading from the monitor area. So this should be protected. So that's why we have a two modes. So either we have a user mode or we have a kernel. We'll talk about that in a bit, in a while. Now we have a memory production so that we can't uh, access the monitor. Okay, the monitor can access the monitor area and the user area, but not the other user program. So we need a memory production uh, to be there. Now there is a timer which will uh, try to see if some process is in a deadlock or is hogging uh, the resources, it's not allowing others to do, so we will preempt that job, okay? We can do that by the time the timer goes off, that means your maximum time is up, you are preempted. Now, uh, in authority machine level, instructions are designated privileged and can be executed only by the monitor, okay? Uh, so if, uh, you know, uh, if the processor encounters such an instruction like executing user program, uh, now that will be kind of, we say that error, error is, uh, that, that will be the error at the processor here. What I'm saying is here are some machine instructions. So we say, for example, input-output, which is um, not to be done by the processor, so uh, processor generates an error here, and here what will happen is control is given back to the monitor. Okay. Now uh, monitor uh, retains control of all I/O devices. Uh, this prevents, you know, uh, you know, programs from user programs from accidentally reading job control instructions from the next job. So you could easily uh, do that if you don't allow the monitor to do all these things because it's the scheduling and all. This is the I/Os. It's all uh, taken by the uh, by the monitor, and this is the control language interpreter. This is uh, what we talked about these control languages. Uh, this is being interpreted by this part of the monitor, right? 
Okay, and now uh, there are also the interrupts. And now uh, in interrupts are actually uh, to relinquish control that or to regain control from user program. We can have an interrupt, high priority uh, interrupt comes in. We just say this program, hey, you are done. You can now you go and uh, load another program. So that is the interrupt processing. For example, uh, if we have a, uh, as an example of the interrupt, I will tell you that we are running a program. For example, we're running a program. And uh, this is, say, for example, uh, the atomic uh, bomb reactor. So this is a reactor, and we are running a program in a reactor. And what happens is uh, it, uh, somehow something happened and a reactor becomes so hot. Now interrupt comes in, uh, that interrupt comes in that, hey, reactor becomes so hot. So what I have to do is we have to stop this job and we have to uh, switch the fans on. Okay, we have to switch the fans on. So this job is to be done. So this is a high priority job. So we preempt it, we interrupt. So we had an interrupt. Uh, interrupt is uh, that we our reactor is so hot it can burn it can blast so we have to switch the fans on so we have to relinquish it we have to get control back to the monitor and uh, run the other program